Okay, I'm reloaded. I'm the greatest bodybuilder ever. And one tough son of a bitch. Fifteen years ago, April 99. After I placed fourth at the Arnold Classic before my first Mr. Olympia, which I finished second to last, 240 pounds. I've secured the legacy on the competition stage. I've done it, I've lost it, I won it back. It's not about how many times you win it, it's about the fashion you win it in. I still think I'm still the biggest name in bodybuilding. You hear the stories about someone becoming a bodybuilder because they were short or they were picked on or this and that. That wasn't never the case with me. For me, it was doing things at the fullest, which I learned through my whole life. If you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it all the way. I thought, okay, I'm gonna be a bodybuilder and I'm gonna take it as far as I can take it. It was about me getting on the stage and just showing my physique. And it'd be like asking me, who's your favorite bodybuilder? I really don't have one. Jay Cutler is my favorite bodybuilder, of course. He's the greatest of all time. I'll tell you, Jay Cutler's the greatest of all time. I have something that a lot of these guys don't have, and I don't even have to know them to know that they don't have it because it's very rare. And that's, you know, the drive and the determination to be at your absolute best. And what I've done and what I continue to do and what I plan to do is still much bigger than anyone's going to do in this business. I, I have no question. You know when you when you think you've seen someone work hard, like, oh man, he works hard. And then you meet someone like Jay and you're like, this is a whole nother ball game. Like the game kind of changed. After, you know, obviously what we do every day here, he also has to go out and travel every every week. He has to speak to other people. He has to you know, he's an ambassador for the sport. So him being, you know, technically my mentor, like obviously we're friends, but I look at him more as like, you know, a mentor and someone who's guiding me, because I can tell you in the, the time, in the lot of time that we've been together, I, the stuff that I've learned is kind of priceless. This is all about the fans. So for me, I gotta sit, you know, I gotta be able to produce money to obviously, you know, to keep coming up with new stuff and give people something to see. Now, yes, I've become one of the best merchandisers as far as, uh, you know, online stuff for, you know, in the bodybuilding market, but it's with help through, like, guys like this. I mean, he's a 21-year-old kid. He's keen on a lot of stuff. He does a lot, too. It's not just, you know, I, I more or less just kind of set it in front of him because at this point, I'm, what I'm trying to do is take the pressure, take all of the, the workload off of him because it's not his job, it's my job, and also he has a, you know, he's training for the show. For me, I was kind of like thrown out there and being like, you have to learn on your own. And you learn from mistakes, and I tell him, my success, what I've done in my career, everyone looks at it and says, God, Jay's been successful, a lot of things he's done, but I failed at so many things, and that's how I've become successful, because I know the mistakes, and you have to make those mistakes before you learn. You know, early in my career, I had great success. I won almost every show I ever did. I turned professional in my third or fourth contest. Going into the Olympia, I had huge expectations. My first Mr. Olympia, 99. And I finished 15 out of 16. And I quit after that show. I'm like, you know what, this is just, am I just not good? I actually questioned myself for the only time ever in my career. You know, I said, okay, I'm gonna move forward, I'm gonna get settled, I'm gonna compete in the Night of Champions in 2000. And I won. I won, I beat, you know, the likes of Paul Dillette, these guys. I won my first professional show, which I was not even on the radar for. And 
that was justification and made me realize that I could be very good. That's when I kind of knew I could be like the best soon. Is the winner of this year's Arnold Schwarzenegger Classic. Is the hottest new pro to come on the scene in the last couple of years. Second place in this year's Mr. Olympia, Mr. Jay Cutler. I was great and I was talked about as an upcoming pro and like I thought okay I'm gonna I'm gonna win this thing like uh, one year this year next you know right around the corner and I got second four times to Coleman in a row and to be honest I mean when I got to 2004 I was at wit's end man I was pretty much like I think I said in 2006, if this doesn't happen, I mean, I'm going to start thinking about doing something else. Ronnie's been here winning the show for the past, uh, how many years, Ronnie? Six. Six years. But this you is know, my town. It just got frustrating. The guy won eight times, and, and uh, you know, I was second four already out of those eight to him. Um, I sat out one year. So that's basically five years that I was, like, waiting for this guy to, to be beat. And... And I understand the guy was probably the best bodybuilder ever, but at the same time, I was like the guy right there. It was like me and him in the show every year and then everybody else. So you, the show was being sold as like the Jay and Ronnie show. I've been coming here, you know, and getting second all these times and since 2001, and they said uh, the champ can't be taken out. Well, you know what? The new champ's in town. I think the dedication and the commitment to being who I was and staying with it and actually winning is what people can look at as just if you really put your time and effort in, eventually good things will come. I think pretty much I've, you know, I've secured the legacy on the competition stage. I really don't have any real specific goals as far as uh, my physique. It's more on the aspect of the legacy of of Jay Cutler and where it's going to go from here. Um, once you win the Olympia, I always tell people, it's not about how many times you win it, it's about the fashion you win it in. So for me, I won, you know, I beat the greatest guy of all time. You know, I lost the title and I came back and won when no one thought I could do it. Uh, I'm pretty satisfied with the way things have gone and uh, continue to go and, and what the future holds at this point. For me, what I learned all along is the, the only real money I made that stayed was money I invested in myself. And through, like, even like the, the small stuff, like the videos, which at the time were huge. Um, you know, I did like a trainer site, which didn't end up doing what it could have, but I didn't have to put a ton of money into it. You know, the signature items, like, you know, the Jay Cutler shaker cup and the fat grips and things that I they chose to endorse. You know, the belt line with Chic with the Jay Cutler signature belt. All that residual stuff, that's money for, for yeah, forever that's just going to come in, you know. You can make a drastic amount of money uh, being a marketer and, and traveling, doing guest appearances, being involved socially on the internet. You know, I had my clothing line and, and I did things that no one ever did, the DVDs, and I was kind of the leader of all that stuff. and. And becoming an endorser, of, I made up so many endorsements. I mean, I created magazine. I was the first one ever to be contracted by any magazine. I was contracted by Flex and Musket Development. At the same time, I was the first one ever with both those magazines. I created that for the athletes. My first muscle and fitness cover is here. I was 21 years old in this cover. This was taken in Marina Del Rey. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was 1995, and uh, that was my first muscle and fitness cover. And that was part of, that was the beginning. That was, I would say if anyone asked me what was the highlight cover, was for sure Joe Weider put me on muscle and fitness cover. Looking back and looking at my success, it's hard to think, well, I would have done things much differently. Um, I always said, if I won the Olympia, I'll try to do something different than the last guy did. I did in certain aspects, but I was so consumed with the training and the travel schedule and the demand of the sponsors that I had, I had so little time to commit to that. 
pulled myself away and I secluded myself, I became very selfish because I wanted to avoid any conflict that would affect my training. And that was my life. And that became, in the beginning, a show a year, then it turned into two shows a year, then multiple shows, and then eventually it was like, when I wasn't training for the show, I was booked at events, so no weekends were available to go see my family and spend time with my family, and I missed weddings and missed anniversaries and missed birthdays, and you know, now looking, my dad's 84, my mom's 72. Uh, I'm trying to get there as much as I can to be with them. And obviously my brothers and sisters, you know, that's, their kids are all grown now, married, children. I mean, it's crazy. It's, uh, life goes by quick. And that's when you sit and realize, like, you know, there, there could have been a lot of opportune times to spend more time with the family. That's how I'm so successful is I cut out anything. I can cut things in a minute. I can be your best friend to talk to me on the phone every day. And people used to be like, what happened to you? You disappeared. I haven't talked to you. So I'm training for a contest, man. They're like, well, why didn't you say anything? You're like, you just, you, it's one day it just stops. I said, that's how it works. You know, I told you when the phones go off, when this, when this training starts, you know what, I don't answer the telephones. I don't have time to, to talk about what's going on outside of the gym and my house and training for this competition. It's just it's, it's the competitive nature of an athlete. You know, I wish I had the answer for what the what the future brings. I have an idea. Um, it involves a lot of a lot of work, uh, but it's it's definitely a more mature stage. I mean, I think. Um, the competitive side slowing down. I can't say when that necessarily that's going to end, but I know my focus today uh, is is stepping into my job and stepping out. I know you know my training has has gotten a little a little more loose. I'm a businessman. I'm not just a bodybuilder anymore. I'm not just zoned in on winning Mr. Olympia titles anymore. I've done it. I've lost it. I won it back. Yeah, I'm, I'd like to win one more. But I realized that to keep a level base and to keep moving forward and to have the success where I want to go now, not just on the stage, but off the stage, it's necessary to find more balance and that's what I'm focused on. And that's every day moving forward. There's never gonna be a day that passes that I'm gonna step out and people are gonna, aren't gonna know who Jay Cutler is. I don't see it ever happening. You know, I've been a four-time champ you know and I've been six time runner up and I'm the greatest bodybuilder ever there's no question I feel that I'm the greatest Jay Cutler! Suck it up, suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. Mentally, you have to be, I think, a little crazy. People approach me and they say, Jay, what's the secret? What's the secret? What's the secret? I don't like to eat anything. If you ask me what my favorite food is, I don't have a favorite food. I don't look forward to any meal at all. You're a living legend. That's what's amazing about what I do. I'll tell you, Jay Cutler's greatest of all time.